What's Hot in Tucson 2021, the live broadcast, day nine of eight. For our next segment, we are going to shoot all the way back out to Milano, Italy, and we have Dr. Federico Pizzotta with his team over at Mineralogical Collection Professionals, otherwise known as MCP, on the line, ready to talk to us a little bit about their company and some of the exciting projects that they've been involved in. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren and Peter and welcome Federico to the show. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for this uh, unbelievable opportunity. I am very, very excited uh, to be here because uh, I was not expecting to have, uh, despite of this uh, bad situation we had, uh, the possibility of speaking uh, of uh, the people I normally meet in Tucson and to have some feeling about uh, the Tucson time uh, from here in Italy, where we are. I, I am here with uh, Alessandro, my partner, with Sarah and Johnny Lanza. And uh, I would like uh, to introduce uh, during uh, our uh, time now also some other people of our team. Actually, uh, what, to, what uh, can I say? Uh, this year started very well for us. Uh, in our lab, uh, actually, we started uh, with the unbelievable project that, that uh, early 2020, actually it was the end of the project uh, of the famous piece, which was recently published on Mineralogical Record, uh, The King of Kashmir. I don't know if you, Brian, can uh, show some photos of uh, uh, this uh, piece, the process we had uh, during uh, the, 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 the preparation of this piece, and uh, so the team together with the team. If you see the picture, uh, in which uh, we have the piece uh, in, uh, in front of the team. You can recognize the background. Actually, the piece was exactly here. You can right in this place. It is, it is remaining a, a fantastic uh, uh, experience for us. Actually, during the year we went on, we suffered the problems about... Uh, the COVID and so on, but uh, the work in the lab never slowed down. We never had problems uh, of lack of work. On the opposite, we had uh, a very crowded year, and uh, we are happy that at the end, many of our customers appreciated our work. And, uh, and this moment for us is fantastic to be here to speak in any case in a situation uh, at some level like uh, the use of time. Um, in Tucson this year, 2021, uh, we had uh, the project uh, of uh, open the MCP lab uh, for servicing, uh, serving uh, uh, the show. But uh, okay, we had uh, to make a step back, wait a year, and uh, so I believe that uh, we will see our lab in 2022. Uh, so we go back real quickly to uh, just a couple more photographs here. Uh, there we have Fabrizia brushing off the termination of one of the aquamarines in that fabulous cluster, the, the King of Kashmir. And uh, we have another shot right there of just you guys working hard on this. I mean, incredible. Yes, uh, Giovanni, another guy of our team working at the piece. <laughs> it's wonderful. So what was okay. the dog's contribution? Ah, you did. There were hairs of the dog around we had to clean up. This was the reason Fabrizio was uh, brushing the tip of the two of the aquamarine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, you know that uh, MCP has, uh, develop is developing a branch about, uh, which is a commercial branch. We are uh, actually for the commercial part uh, involved uh, in the process of uh, buying the specimen from uh, dealers, buying from private, buying single pieces, buying collections. Uh, and, uh, and obviously the most uh, exciting part for me at least uh, is uh, to find uh, the specimen directly at the source. You know that uh, I, I like to mine, I like to prospect. Uh, this is the perfect part of the process. To tell you honestly, I believe that people which know me know that uh, I hate to sell stuff. I like uh, to make a research, to 
to make a prospection, uh, to open mines, uh, to teach to miners, uh, to mine with the miners, extract the pieces, bring to the lab, uh, understand what to do, create, uh, prepare as better as they can. And after, if there are the sad situation, uh, the, the pieces have to go to the market for getting back the money, for paying for everything, to make some profit for a living. The... The, 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 the ideal situation would be to collect everything we try, but it is not possible. This is the reason that uh, on one side, when I am a museum curator, because I am part-time a museum curator at the Milan Museum, it is a super enjoying time for me because uh, I take care about collections, which are public collections, and I try to improve, and this stuff would remain there. Uh, we are not enough rich to keep everything we find, so we go to the market. And for some other people, luckily, my partner Alessandro, to sell stones is a uh, mirrors, is uh, some fun. So I am uh, very happy about this work, and uh, I want that uh, now he will be tell you about uh, some stones we uh, brought here in this room, which is uh, the MCP showroom. Uh, which uh, were expected uh, to be in Houston, and now we can show you on this camera. So, I leave uh, Alessandro speaking. For me, this is the funny part, because uh, this is the, my favorite room of the building. Of course, I enjoy Federico when he trim, clean, and all the team when he's working on the piece. But uh, here, as a collector, I enjoy the minerals for long, long uh, time during the day. So if you want, it's time to see some rocks. So we can start. Fantastic. We can start from here, first of day. I hope you will enjoy. Starting from a simple court, but something for me, very aesthetic and unique. This is a court from Colombia, Peña Blanca. So, I thought this is a really, really good one, especially because uh, are not losing crystals, are on metrics and very well displayed. Let me see if the light here would be better. As you can see, yeah, this piece was uh, very interesting for me because. Uh, I found this piece uh, in Tucson last year, the last Tucson possible, and it was uh, on a big, big rock, almost 20 kilos, and uh, was pretty one of the last day of uh, the Hotel Tucson city center, and this piece was there alone, and I saw these crystals coming out from a very big rock, and I Remember, I spoke with Federico and I said, can you, can you trust me if I tell you I found a very, very impressive quartz after trimming? And he said, let's show, let's show it. And this is the result. I don't have the picture how it, how it was, but honestly, make me proud to show you this. Mm -hmm. It's such a great story and what a beautiful specimen too. Because the other part I like, I love to do, because I'm the commercial part. So, I spent a lot of time in the shows all over the world. I love to hunting in the shows some treasures that can be uh, improved with the work of Federico. And this one, and this one are the two perfect example because this is the lastest show we did in 2020. We were allowed to do the touring show in Italy it was the only show we did and this piece approximately the same story of that one was in a showcase of an Italian dealer. And when I saw it, I said, it's time to make it better, trimming, cleaning. And I think, Brian, do you have the pictures of this? Yes, I do. What I'm gonna do is I'm uh, pulling up on the screen right now. I think this was how you originally found it, correct? Uh, this is immediately after the first trimming. The oh, okay. big piece, yeah, but this was a step of the work to remove and make two samples to make this better. And uh, I think you have the other one. This one was how it was before. So when I saw I the see. piece of the, yeah, 
And after well, I had them reversed. This was yeah, the no problem. And then exactly. the next step was this. And, and these the articles from was Georgia was now it's yeah, yeah, exactly. And now is how it is now. So this is a, a side part of the, the job we have to do in the show. So we can, yeah, there are some others, but I think we have time just to show you some. In this showcase, we have some other funny and crazy keys. Probably somebody saw already this because we used as an advertise, but look, this is an aquamarine from uh, Pakistan. What makes this piece really, really nice is this. We bought directly from the source, from a source of Federico. And when this guy showed us, a Pakistani guy, we immediately thought was Namibia because of the color and the termination and the, 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 the quality of the crystal. But we trust the guy. And this is Sugar Valley Aquamarine with funny shape of double terminated crystals on the main one. Make something unique. The shape's fantastic and I love the, the color. It's not the typical exactly. Pakistani, uh, you know, it's a deep blue. blue. It's a deep, yeah. true blue, yeah. sort of a cerulean. Absolutely. Going here, I think would be interesting. I hope it could be visible on the camera. Everybody know windows, but can you see the line in the middle of the crystal? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. This was very, very nice purchase. It's a window quartz from France. It's coming uh, out from Chamonix, Mont Blanc area. The quality, it's impressive. And uh, I think the line in the middle make this piece super special. It, the gemminess, but it, the fact that it tells the story about how it formed and the also shows off just how ridiculously gemmy that specimen yeah. is. Is, yeah. is that is that a fodden of some kind? No, no, no. This is a window, and like, the line in the middle, the line in the middle, it's following perfectly the axis where the window is spinning. So this is uh, the the line, the imaginary line. Yeah. When the Gwindle starts spinning. So the Gwindle has a twist. Does that colorless yeah. area these show make, the twist too? make, uh, of course, a Gwindle instead of a Faden. Yeah. A Faden quartz will not spin. Huh. That's wild. Huh. It's spinning. So you can see it's a little bit uh, ending and uh, spinning. Really interesting. You can kind of see that 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 twist in that central part there. That's a cool Excellent. piece, and it's cute it. too. <laughs> I love this piece. Yeah. And uh, now I can uh, show you some other things. Before a publication of uh, of a piece, oh. maybe somebody knows this book. Is the minerals and precious stones of Brazil. Travel to visit some customer, and uh, somebody knows the book. Wait, okay. You see this piece? Mm -hmm. Was problem? Yeah. And uh, when I went to visit the collector, I saw a piece in his uh, showcase, and then I realized it was that one. And uh, he was. Uh, we can go on the other showcase. He was happy to show me this, and uh, he decided to sell this piece to us, and we were very lucky. This piece was in the collection of Marco and Livio Tironi a long time ago. I think you know. Now he's working a lot in Brazil. He's doing a great job there. And yeah. uh, this was a, a kind of beginning of uh, his career there. And I think it's something amazing. What I'm trying to show you, and I don't know if uh, it will be 
it will work, is totally complete the terminal, and also in the back. I think it's very hard to show, but it's, uh, it's almost impossible, yeah. But it's complete. We had the chance to clean and reprepare totally this piece. Yeah. Especially we had to work on this tip to restore it because on the book, the photo of uh, a friend of Roberto hide the tip because it was damaged in the book. Mm. Yeah, now there is uh, no reason to hide it. So then that has just one restoration on it, the tip. This one, yeah. The tips of the tourmaline are perfectly and not restored. There are some repairs, one and one, but also this one, I'm lucky to decide to collect only garlic. That's a okay. So like you with the showcase, we finished and uh, we can move on the other area of uh, the showroom. These are the drawers, one of the funniest parts for a lot of collectors. We put inside here some stuff, uh, nice to, to hunt uh, and check uh, and uh, what we bought in the past from collections uh, and uh, from projects project uh, Federico has uh, or uh, the other guys. So here you can see we put different kind from European, American, every kind of. I show you, for example, this posgonite. This is a beautiful posgonite. And what makes this more beautiful also, and is uh, something I love to do, is keep the old labels when we have. So keeping a label of Palumbo, Hmm. Fosgenite from Monteponi is a classic locality, classic piece. Love it. And some others from recent uh, tourmalines from uh, Afghanistan. Very nice also. And there are drawers full, full of these stones. People love to, to come here and try to hunt some treasure. Also, here we can see something nice. Oh, for example, this. This, I think somebody knows, somebody is not uh, able to realize, but these are from uh, Morocco. And oh. is what we love to um, find because they're the red tourmalines. You know, it's not easy to work with uh, a person like Federico who loves tourmaline, so you have to try to find the best tourmaline. And I think the color of these of this samples are really amazing for the locality. I don't know if Federico in the past found something similar in Elba, but they are really, really nice. I don't know, what do you think? It's a beautiful saturated red, no, no, yeah. hot, no, nothing brown about the color at all. It's just nice, clean, saturated red to pink. I love it. Yeah, me too. And this is a nice material to work on. And uh, maybe Federico, can explain better than me about this, but uh, maybe in another in another life. Yeah. So let's see. Oh yeah, uh, tourmaline from uh, Kong, uh, from uh, Madagascar, for example. They are very well represented in this drawer, and now one better than Federico can uh, can show you this. Okay. I, I was hoping that uh, you would take care of all the views, but no, no way, no way. Your uh, no, I, it's uh, just a selection of uh, some uh, um, interesting crystals from of tourmaline in general, lipoquotite. Uh, I would like to show just a few small things. This is, uh, for example, a, is a, a nice uh, small cluster composed by two major crystals. And uh, it has a, a very interesting mixed color from orange, red, uh, greenish, uh, uh, purplish, uh, so which is typical of uh, Lidiquotite. Uh, and this is from Betty Sutra. But uh, beside of the Betty Sutra material, which was uh, one of the most prolific localities in the last year, we have still some moralities from rare localities such as this is from Antandrocombi, 
and on Pondropumbi is uh, well known for its uh, very uh, saturated uh, red color. And uh, we have uh, also some other localities, uh, uh, Batugaga, for example, uh, uh, and other localities near Tetezanziu. This is um, an interesting uh, crystal. These are localities which are uh, giving very small production. Uh, in general, these are worked by local miners for uh, gem rath, uh, low-grade gem rath for uh, African and Indian buyers. But time to time, uh, some nice uh, small crystals are uh, found. And uh, sometimes the colors are crazy, but uh, in general, these are localities which, uh, in which crystals are too rare to open uh, real works uh, for uh, right, for, uh, for specimen. Look at the color of this. This is unbelievable color. That is totally unbelievable. That yeah, is yeah. and if it's a floater, a small crystal, when you take out the light, it does not look so, so good. But when you put the light, it is uh, one of the best red color I know. Mm -hmm. It almost, it's the red of the... Uh... The red barrel from Utah, practically. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. It, it, exactly. It's a true fuchsia. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I leave now Alessandro because we prefer uh, some uh, some special things now for you. Yeah, and I think we need the help uh, of uh, the brother of the group. Stefano, I don't know if somebody knows him or not. Stefano? Maybe. I think. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm Jarno. White boxes. We're always excited by these. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, look at that. This is uh, one of the biggest crystals of sulfur we purchased ever. And uh, of course, uh, we don't like to touch too much this piece. Uh, he's totally, totally crystallized also in the back. And the geminus and the quality and damage free. Uh, I don't know if Federico knows something about the, the years, uh, probably, of this pound, because it was not uh, uh, reported from uh, the, the guy who gave us, but uh, I think uh, he's uh, approximately yeah, 50, 60 years old. And uh, on this piece, what is unbelievable is the quality, the edges are perfect, and uh, no evident the crack inside. So it was... Uh, one of the best uh, hunting of the last two years. This piece was in Sicily and was in uh, in the hand of the wife of the miner, of one miner. So image is uh, one of the cutest I saw. Pro wow. uh, approximately, this is nine centimeters. I I remind, and I hope the color is uh, it's yeah no, it's okay on the screen. It's yeah, a much... kind of bitumen one, so you can see some traces of uh, black spots and bitumen in, and this, uh, in my opinion, make uh, the yellow more warm. With the light, let's see. Yeah, you can see with the light. Is uh, very yellow. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And now I think Federico is a surprise. Yeah, I'll show you. So you can take care yeah. of the super. I like to do another thing of course of the Fabrizia. 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 Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing well, and you? Very good. I miss you guys. I really miss you this year. <laughs> so another white box. <laughs> uh, another box. Oh, yeah. oh, um, let's go close to the showcase. There is Petra Farrakhan. 
And uh, so I was asking to Fabrizio to come because she was responsible for completing this piece, I believe, one hour ago. When we knew that we have this opportunity of coming uh, on this screen, uh, we said, uh, okay, let's try to prepare the, this piece in time. Let's make it easy. And let's see if it is on the right side or not. Yes. Wow. Mm. Oh my gosh. That color That's is ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, this is uh, obviously you can see an emerald uh, from uh, uh, Pakistan. And uh, it is, oh yes, it is uh, what, what I like in this uh, piece, I don't know the color you can get on the screen because of the problem uh, with emerald, you know, it is uh, that uh, you can have the color turn into blue. I try to use uh, my spotlight. Maybe I can, uh, I don't know if it is better or what or not. Wow. The color is ridiculous in that specimen exactly the what the, made me crazy on this piece was the color actually we threw one of our connections in pakistan we had the, this piece which was offered first uh, through some photos and so on but it was in such a bigger uh big rock and it was such complex at the origin that it was uh, quite impossible for us uh, to understand uh, how it was good or not. Uh, and so we passed on it, uh, but the guy was uh, so so convinced that it was a good piece that uh, he came from Pakistan to here. It was a surprise. One day we had uh, the uh, bell <laughs> ringing in our company and the guy with the emerald was coming. He was supposing, he told us that you are the, uni the, the only one which can take care about this piece. I know you can... Uh, make uh, the repair actually the piece as uh, two repairs as uh, and uh, a couple of minor uh, restoration but the guy was uh, was convinced that we can do a nice job so at the end uh, uh, okay we decided because it was expensive because uh, the man actually knew that the piece uh, had uh, a significant gem content this crystal on the right has a huge gem inside and the average quality is very high. So at the end, uh, okay, we agreed for the price, we bought the piece, and we started working on it. Uh, but after it was a quite a long work and very delicate, uh, and I put in a box up to three days ago when I knew that we have the opportunity of, to be here. <laughs> and, <laughs> Thank you. Go, go. And uh, so we worked uh, like crazy. And uh, actually, like crazy, it was... Uh, very delicate work, very precise work to remove all the parts, all the all the mica to make the perfect repair, to put back the parts without any missing fragments and so on. And at the end, uh, at the end of work, the result uh, made me very happy. The geometry of the piece is uh, is incredible. The size and the color. The color is uh, something uh, really, really good. Okay, and this is about the Pissarro. And after Fabrizio is gone, I believe that uh, we have another guy of our team coming. Victor, we organize with Victor. Victor is coming. I believe that many of you know Victor. Oh, hello, everyone. Thank you guys hello. for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I've been working out all day. Okay, thank you, Victor. 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 You can see that we are here in front of a Lydico type showcase. There are crystals uh, from uh, different localities. Uh, and uh, uh, this is actually, indeed, is Nigeria. It's not uh, Madagascar. All the rest is Madagascar. And uh, obviously, 
maybe the most exciting one is uh, this one on the upper right with this uh, wow. typical farmers of Madagascar. My God. And uh, so, I, but I want to show you something huge. <laughs> <laughs> So, sometimes people in the telling that uh, Lidicotai from Madagascar are too dark, they are uh, not, not enough transparent, they look brownish, and so on, and so on, and so on. I disagree totally. I like uh, dark, I like brownish, I like uh, oh, they are giant, sharp, uh, Losing actually the brownish color is related uh, to some kind of uh, pleochroism of the crystals when they put to the light on the top. But tell me which other mineral on the planet can create crystals like this. Wow. Good Look job. at the sharpness. Look at the sharpness, the size. determination, the condition of this crystal is unbelievable. And this was a, the touch in the mat in the pocket and uh, recrystallizes the bottom with a crust of uh, albite and quartz. So actually, I also like these crystals because these are fantastic examples of uh, what was described in 1922 by Alfred Lacroix in Madagascar when uh, these crystals were totally unknown uh, to the planet. But uh, after that time, uh, quite uh, nothing significant uh, was uh, found up to the 60s when Julius Patch operated on Jana Bonoina, recovering a big number of nice crystals and after again, uh, no production for a long time. But in general, these huge crystals were always damaged. But uh, going to Madagascar, working uh, close to the miners, teaching them uh, how to, uh, to collect, properly collect them. This crystal was saved in a crazy place, in a remote area, but uh, was preserved perfect, given the opportunity of having today such, uh, such a sharp and nice object. Federico, you have no idea how nervous Lauren and I were while you were holding that with one hand. Well, one hand and, and, and gesturing with the other. Oh my gosh. And we have another example here. This is uh, maybe even more rare. Because uh, it is an example. This has also a more brighter color, but because of the size of the crystal is smaller, but it is a complex group mm. wow. made up of a number of nice crystals. I don't know what you can see in the screen, but it looks uh, very lustrous, uh, super sharp, uh, and again, the piece was completely detached in the pocket and uh, completely recrystallized at the bottom. So what's going on on the, the top left there? I can see that there's uh, the, it's it's more pink. What, what's what's going on there? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Can, you, can you describe okay. that? Yeah, this part is uh, composed uh, by tiny crystals and this is uh, actually the color of the last generation of tourmaline in this pocket, which actually is pink. So the big crystals are, uh, have a pink skin, but uh, this is another typical feature of tourmaline from Madagascar, in which the color is normally very deep because they are super glassy. Mm. So, so the color of the skin is pink, but being glassy, it is taking out the color from the inside of the of, uh, of the group. Which gives it that great tone. That's really cool. I love how that late stage small crystallization kind of tells the, the story of the formation there. Yes. And okay, now 
I, I am in charge of because Alessandro tells you are the man of humor and you have to start to find a strong tourmaline. And I wanted to introduce the Congo tourmaline we have, the Congo project, but he told me, no, you have to do this. So I'm sorry, I speak again. <laughs> going on speaking and I want to show you some stones here. Actually, it happened that uh, since uh, two and a half years, we developed uh, a project in Congo. Uh, Congo is a very difficult place. Uh, we are working very close to, with the local people and uh, we have uh, an associate uh, of uh, our group, uh, which actually is living in Congo, an Italian actually. And uh, he was able inside Congo, not Rwanda, because uh, I'm sorry to tell that 99% of the old production from Congo tourmaline were smuggled to Rwanda, and from Rwanda went in the rest of the of the, of the market. But uh, we decided to work inside Congo with uh, actually it was quite difficult, but uh, with uh, legal permission and so on. And uh, uh, we are working uh, since over one year right in the mine. Actually, we cannot say that we are operating the mine. This is completely impossible for at least for the moment, this moment. And uh, I'm sorry to say that it would be probably impossible forever. It's a very dangerous place. There are uh, very bad problems of security. And uh, I can say that uh, only Congolese people can indeed stay right in the mine. But uh, we were able to develop some uh, good contact with some trustable people. And what we are, we were able to collect uh, are crystals which are saved from damaging right at the entrance of the pits in the mine. It means that uh, these local people are in general used uh, to put uh, the old departments of the tourmaline they find in banks because they are used to sell rust. And in general, all the crystals which were which came to the market in the past were crystals which were in bags of rust and transported in the bags and after took out from the bag of rust as a pieces for collection. And this was damaging the crystals, which were always could be chicks and so on. So our advantage was uh, to be able to save the crystals right at the entrance of the pit, which allowed us uh, to find the crystals which are much larger than the crystals which came to the market in the past, uh, to find some few crystal groups and crystal clusters. And uh, we will see also some uh, minerals. I'll show you some examples. These are huge crystals which in general are not known in the market. This is a tumor. This looks a little bit like California tumor. It's not a, a nice quality, I can say, but it is big for the locality. And if I want to start from the worst quality, I show this, which is in any case exceptionally interesting because of the luster, it is complete, doubly terminated. It is a watermelon inside, and it is something that Hong Congo people does not know. Mm. But okay, let's go to something more classic. Here is another example. The termination is such a cool color. I love yeah, it. Exactly. Love green. This is very unusual. Yeah. This crystal is uh, very, very nice with a, a cat eye section at the top. And uh, I can go also other examples going to more jammy stuff, which is typical for Congo. Oh, that's fabulous. It's quite color. a big size and uh, super sharp and uh, gem quality. Wow. And uh, this is an example of uh, the groups. Oh, I love that one. And I was also crystals. looking. Yeah, and I was also looking for uh, for uh, if there was a chance of finding uh, different uh, minerals at the place. Uh, and uh, after some time, it, and everything was removed by the miner from the surface. But uh, after a while, I found this piece, which is uh, some quartz. And uh, these crystals are some. Uh, 
microlite or at least pyrochlor group minerals, which are included inside the quark. And these remain the only accessory mineral I observed uh, over, um, over one year, up to when uh, in one group of pieces, uh, it came this piece here. Hmm. And this is a microlite, and again, uh, or at least something which uh, is, uh, must be analyzed, but uh, it could be microlite, but look at the size and the quality. It's amazing what happens when you're at the source and you can really get a, a chance to see what's out there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I, I want to show you some more stuff. I have, uh, I have a good selection actually, but obviously I cannot show you all these crystals. But uh, I would like to show you some. Look at the color of this. Oh, wow. I love that termination. The, color. Uh, the, 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 the colors of the, and this is a, uh, completely recrystallized at the bottom. So it's a floater. And there are different varieties. This is more typical for the locality, but uh, really nice object. And I like also this kind of a strange yellow, yellow green. There is a, there is a huge variety. To be honest, I don't have till now uh, some uh, serious uh, analytical results. I made just a few first analyses and it looks like uh, being a hill bite, uh, but uh, I don't know exactly. I, I would like to make a systematic analysis in the near future. Look at this crystal here. Hmm. That contrast is so sharp between the two and that exactly. is is so a, a gemmy. Very sharp. Uh, contact between uh, the reddish part below and the upper part and another lovely, very lovely piece. That's really lovely. Yeah, and, uh, and we are working, working hard. We had a big problems because of COVID. And uh, this is not a joke. This was not something prepared, but uh, today we got to the last production. <laughs> DSL arrived a couple of hours ago, but uh, I, I, it is not uh, the first moment I opened because I was inspecting this stuff, obviously, but I wanted to share with you. I just check if I don't do a disaster, but I'm <laughs> very excited about uh, the last work we did. Now I want to be sure that I'm not showing it something which was damaged during the transportation. Everything looks fine. So, so you have an idea how the pieces arrived directly from the mine. Oh my God. Wow. That's got great color and look at that termination. That's gonna be an exciting piece yeah. to see what's cleaned up. That would be a mighty nice package to get any morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is definitely yellow. Jimmy. Okay, this is dirt directly from the mine. These are the inventory numbers we put on the crystals when we collect from the miners. And, uh, keep going oh look at the little cap on top of that where it just goes from that sort of rich yellow color and then just yes, very exactly. tip just like a little beanie <laughs> yeah 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 the gem portion and uh okay i'm looking for the best one somewhere okay this is not bad no fantastic Oh, the I quality love of this crystal is unbelievable. Okay, here is my baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. Easy to see why. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man. 
Look how jacked <laughs> And that this is, is death washed. Nothing done directly from the mind. Amazing. Oh gosh, I really look forward to seeing that when you get it all all cleaned up because that looks like that is going to be an absolute smoker. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Do you remember your your question? You you asked Federico two days ago, one week ago, ten days ago, if uh, it's better for him. Airbike or liquid? You remember? I remember that. That was on Mineral Talks Live. And all those people wrote to Federico and asked, but why, why, why? And also me, I start asking, but why you love liquid type instead of airbike? You're Mr. Elba. And I wanted to ask him again, why? <laughs> why you prefer the liquid type? Okay, they are big, they are loose, loose, but. Uh, actually, I have some good reason. <laughs> actually, there were several collectors who called me. I did not expect it that this answer was creating so much rumor. It was, uh, <laughs> and uh, it was the right question. And uh, so uh, I have some reason. And uh, I would like to show one reason. But uh, he is forcing me because I. I, I have a small collection of Elba turmalines, which are Elbite. These Congo turmalines are mostly Elbite, but, uh, but when some liticotite are uh, what I know, uh, so I'm keeping something, and I want to show you something I'm keeping. Uh, okay. Now you want to see. You cannot I think it's funny. Uh, the 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 world, 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 you have to around. show. Yeah. I'm very curious too. Because it was uh, not uh, not very happy, but uh, at the end, as I forced him to speak about Congo, now I forced him to show you why. <laughs> more peace, more peace, but uh, go in the right line. Okay. We're back to the white boxes. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, wow. Holy cow. That was a Dave Wilburism. Oh, uh -huh. my God. <laughs> so. <laughs> wow. And the no, repair, no oh restoration, nothing. Just a floater found in a small pocket in Madagascar. That little spray in the front, the accent yes, of the exactly. white, and then the ridiculous <laughs> color. <laughs> That is a hot specimen. <laughs> so I guarantee you, this is the first time of ever that this piece is shown to anybody, and it is here on uh, What's Up in Tucson. Oh my God. Oh. Well, we, we want that on exhibit here in Tucson next year, Federico. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It doesn't have to fluoresce to be on the exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> not, not if you're that pink. If you're that pink, you're practically fluorescing just being that pink. That is, wow. Yeah. Th that's the kind I of know. specimen that induces fluorescence in the observer, not necessarily the <laughs> specimen. Can't you see them glowing right now? He's returning on my box, right? <laughs> <laughs> so remember, everybody, it's the white box that has that. <laughs> <laughs> was a good answer about the question yes, yes. Yeah. I think now we understand and we have less to worry about <laughs> <laughs> okay oh my god well oh. Federico Alessandro thank you so much you have totally blown us away what you have showed us today is 100% worthy of being what's hot in Tucson, or really maybe more what's not in Tucson, but it certainly is hot. I mean, I didn't even expect to see the kind of stuff that you've shown. So really, really, thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> Grazie mille. And thank you for the opportunity. And thank you to all our team, to Peter and uh, to his daughter. And uh, it's fantastic. 
and a picture of uh, the guy with the video right now with uh, because yeah. <laughs> I did an excellent job. <laughs> it's, difficult. Grazie mille. it's very <laughs> difficult. No, I know. <laughs> uh, Federico, again, thank you so much. That was Mineralogical Collection Professionals, MCP out of Milano, Italy. For all you viewers out there, stay tuned. And we're going to have our next guest up in just a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you.